Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman and we are live at Dell Technologies World 2019 in Las Vegas with about 15,000 or so other people. There's about 4,000 of the Dell Technologies community of partners here as well. Day one, as I mentioned, we're very pleased to welcome back one of our CUBE alumni, Karen Kintos, EVP and Chief Customer Officer from Dell Technologies. Karen, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank the you, Cube. thank you. Always great to be with you all. So, one of the things, you walked out on stage this morning with Michael Dell and, and the whole gang, and you started to share a story that I'd love for you to share with our audience about this darling little girl, Phoebe, from Manchester, England, that um, has to do with this Dell Technologies partnership with Deloitte Digital right. and 3D Prosthetics. Right. Can you share this story and then about this partnership? Well, we, we wanted to tell this story about Phoebe because we really wanted the audience to understand the innovation and all of what's done it with social good is really about the individual. You know, technology plays a key role, but the face behind the technology and the innovation are people. And, you know, as you mentioned, Phoebe is from Manchester, UK. Her father wrote um, this, this blog about Phoebe's experience. Phoebe's aunt, uh, Claire, works for Deloitte. She had access to a lot of what they, they could do in terms of 3D printing, and basically came to Dell, and we were able to take it and scale it and accelerate it and speed it up with a engineer by the name of Seamus, who saw what the precision workstation could do. So it was this small idea to help an amazing little girl like this that has now turned into this movement around how do we more rapidly, quickly scale 3D prosthetics so these children and adults can have a chance at a normal life. So what kind of prosthetics did you guys build for her? It's an arm. So the very first arm that we built for her when she was about five years old was um, had, had the Frozen Disney theme painted on it. I asked her father, Keith, what is the one that she's wearing now? Because she's, she's now this like really super cool seven year old that goes to school and all of her classmates and friends around her see her as this rock star. And the one that she has today is, is printed with unicorns and rainbows. So if you know anything about seven year old girls, it's all about unicorns and rainbows. And she's um, done an amazing thing and she's inspired so many other people around the world, individuals, customers, partners like Deloitte and others that we're working with to really take this to a whole new level. So Karen, I, I think back to Dell, you know, if you think back a couple of decades ago, you know, drove a lot of the, some of the waves of technology change, you know, think back to the PC, but in the early days it was, you know, supply chain and simple ordering and all these environments. And when I've watched Dell move into the enterprise, a lot of that is I need to be listening to my customer. I need to be much closer to them because it's not just ordering a SKU and having it faster and at a reasonable price, but there's a lot more customization. Can you talk about how you put kind of putting that center that customer in the center of the discussion and that feedback loops that you have with them, how that's changed in Yeah, Dell. sure. So all of the basic fundamentals around, you got to order, deliver, make the supply chain work to deliver for our customers, still matters. But it's gone beyond that, to your point. And probably the best way to talk about it is these six customer award winners that we recognized last night. I, I've gotten to know all six of those over the last year. And while they are doing amazing things from a digital transformation using technology in the travel business, the automotive business, banking, financial services, insurance, kind of across the board, the thing that they say consistently is, look, we didn't always have the answer in terms of what we needed, but you came in, you listened, you rolled up your sleeves to try to figure out how you could design a solution that would meet the needs that we have, and they said, that's why you're one of the most strategic partners that we have. Now you can do all those other things right. You can supply chain right and build and produce and all that. But it's the design of a solution that helps us do the things that will allow us to be differentiated. And you look at that list of six 
customers and brands that they represent, right? Carnival Cruise Lines, USAA, Bradesco, um, McLaren, I mean the list kind of goes on. They are the differentiators out there and we're really honored to be able to be, to be working with them. So we're only day one and it's only just after lunchtime, but one of the things I think thematically that I heard this morning in the keynote with Michael and Pat and Jeff and Satya and yourself is it's all about people. Uh, a couple interviews I did earlier today, same sort of thing, it's like we had the city of Las Vegas on, it's, this is all driven by the people and for the people, so that sense of community is really strong. I, I also noticed this year's theme of real transformation parlays off last year's theme of make it real, mm. it being digital transformation, IT, security, workforce transformation. What are some of the things that, well, like the Dell Technologies Cloud this morning, for example, VMware Cloud on Dell EMC that you guys specifically heard say from last year's attendees that are manifesting in some of the announcements today and some of the great things the 15 or so thousand people here are going to get to see and feel and touch at this year's event. Well, Lisa, you, you nailed it. What you heard on stage today is what customers have been telling us over the last year. We unveiled uh, about a month ago with a very small group of CIOs in EMEA our cloud strategy, our portfolio, the things that we're going to be able to do. And one, one customer in particular immediately chimed in and said, we need you in the cloud and we need you in there now. Because you offer choice, you offer open, you offer simplicity, you offer integration, and they're like, there's just too many choices and a lot of them are expensive. So what you heard on stage is absolutely a manifestation of what they told us. The other piece is, look, I think, I think the industry and CIOs are very quickly realizing their workforce matters. Making them happy and productive matters. Having them enabled that they can work flexibly wherever they want to really, really matters. And you know, our unified workspace one solution is all about how we help them simplify, automate, streamline that experience with their workforce so their employees stick around. I mean, there's a war in talent and everybody's dealing with it and that experience is really, really important in particular to the Gen Z's and the Millennials. Yeah, Karen, I, I love that point. Actually, I was really impressed this morning in the press and analyst session this morning, there was a discussion of diversity and inclusion mm. and, and, and the, the, the thing that I heard is, it's a business imperative. It's right. not, okay, it's nice to do it or we should do it, but right. no, this is actually critical to the business. Can you talk about what that means and what you hear from your customers and partners? Yes, yes, well we're seeing it in, in spades in all of these technology jobs that are open, right? So, look, all the research has shown that if you build a diverse team, you'll get to a more innovative solution, and people generally get that. But what they really get today is, here in the US alone, there's 1.1 million open technology jobs by the year 2024. Half of them, half of them are going to be filled by the existing workforce. So there is this war in talent that is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think that's what really has given some a wake up call to corporations around why this matters. I think the other piece that we're starting to see, not just around diversity, but in our other social impact priorities, around the environment, as well as how we use our technology for good. Look, customers want to do business with a corporation that has a soul and they stand for something and they're doing something, not just a bunch of talking heads, but where it's really turning into action and they're being transparent about the journeys and where they're, they're at with it. So it matters now to the current generation, the next generation, it matters to business leaders, it matters to the financial services community, which you start to see you know, some of the momentum around the, you know, the Blackstones and State Streets. So it's really exciting that we're part of it and, um, and we're leading the way in a lot, number of areas. And it's something too that we talk about a lot uh, on theCUBE, diversity and inclusion, from many different levels, one of them being the business imperative that you talked about, the workforce being a, needing to compete for this talent, but also how much different 
products and technologies and apps and APIs and things can be with just thought diversity in and of itself. Right. And I think it's refreshing to what Stu was saying, hey, I'm hearing this is a business imperative, but you're also seeing proof in the pudding. Right. This isn't just, we've got an imperative and we're going to do things nominally. Right. Um, you're seeing the efforts manifest. One of the, Draper Labs, who was one of the customer award winners, that video that was shown this morning struck probably everyone's heart with the Camp Fire in Paradise, California. Oh, I grew up very tragic. close to there. And that was something that only maybe, I get goosebumps, six months ago, so massively devastating. And we think, wow, you know, that was 2018. But seeing how Dell Technologies is enabling this laboratory to investigate the potential toxins coming from all of this charred debris and how they're working to understand the social impact to all of us as they rebuild was a I just thought it was a really nice manifestation of a social impact, but also the technology breadth and differentiation that Dell has enabling. That was, that, that was also why the, the story today was so great about Phoebe, right? Because it's where you can connect the human spirit with technology and scale and have an even bigger impact. And there's so much that te technology can help with today. You know, that, that story about Phoebe, from the time that her aunt from Deloitte identified what, you know, what we could do, all the way to the time that Phoebe got her first arm was less than seven months. Seven months, and you think about you know, some of the other prototypes that were out there, times would take years to be able to do it. So I love that you know, connection of human need with the human spirit and connecting and inspiring and motivating so many children and adults around the world. And what, what are some of the next, speaking of, of Phoebe and the Deloitte Digital 3D Prosthetics Partnership, what are some of the other um, areas where we're going to see this technology that this little five-year-old from Manchester spurned? Well, I'll give you another example. So, um, we, there, was, there was an individual in India, actually an employee of ours, that designed an application to help figure out how to deploy healthcare monitoring in some of the remote villages in India where they don't have access to basic things that we take for granted. Monitoring your blood pressure, right? Checking your cholesterol level. And he created this application that a year later now, we have given kind of the full range of the Dell portfolio technology suite. So it is, you know, our application plus Pivotal, plus VMware, plus Dell EMC, combined with the partnering that we've done with Tata Trust and the state of India, we've now deployed this healthcare solution called Life Care Solution to nearly 37 million rural residents, citizens in India. Wow, 37 and million. 37 million. So a small idea you take from a really passionate individual, a person, a human being, and figure out how you can really leverage that across the full gamut of what Dell can do. Um, I think the results are incredible. Awesome. You guys also have a Women in Technology Executive Summit that you're hosting later this week. Let's talk about that in conjunction to what we talked a minute ago about. There's, it's a business imperative, as Stu pointed out. There's, there are tangible, measurable results. Tell us about this. Well, I'm kind of done, honestly, with a lot of the negativity around, oh, we're not making any progress, oh, we need to be moving fast. And if you look at the amount of effort, energy, and focus that is going into this space by so many companies and the public sector, it's remarkable. And I've met a number of these CIOs over the last year or two. So we basically said, let's invite 20 of them that share our passion, have made progress, care about solving this across their organization. A lot of us are working on the same things. So if we simply got in a room and figured out, are there power in numbers? And if we worked collect collectively together, could we accelerate progress? So that's what it's all about. So we have about 15 or 20 CAOs, both men and women, and we'll be spending you know six or seven hours together and we want to walk away with one or two recommendations on some things that we could collaborate on and have a faster, bigger impact. And I heard that you mentioned collaboration. That's one of the, the vibes I also got from the keynote this morning when you saw Michael up there with Pat and Jeff and Satya. Um, it, 
the collaboration within Dell Technologies, I, I think even talking with Stu and some of the things that have come out and that I've read, it seems to be more symbiosis with VMware, but even some of the, like I said, we're only in, I wouldn't even say halfway through day one, and that is the spirit around here. We talked right. about people influence, but the spirit of collaboration is very authentic here. You are the first chief uh, customer officer for Dell. If you look back at your tenure in this role, could you envisioned where you are now? No, because it was like the first ever chief customer <laughs> officer at Dell. And um, you know, it really gave me a unique opportunity to build something from scratch. And you know, there's been a number of other competitors as well as other companies that have announced in the last year or so the need to have a chief customer officer. The need to figure out how, which is a big remit of mine across Dell Technologies, how do we, how do we eliminate the silos and connect the seams? because that's where the value is going to be unlocked for our customers. That's what you saw on stage today. You saw the value of that with Jeff, with Pat, with Satya, some, you know, one of our most important partners out there. Our customers don't want point solutions. They want them to be integrated, they want them to be streamlined, they don't be automated. They want us to speed time to value. They want us to um, streamline a lot of the back office kind of mundane things that they're like, I don't want my people spending their time anymore in, in doing that. And that's where we see Dell Technologies being so much more differentiated from other um, choices in the market. Yep, I agree with you. Well, Karen, thank you so much for joining Stu and me on theCUBE this afternoon, sharing some of the stories. Look forward to hearing next year what comes out of this year's Women in Tech Exec Summit. Thank you so much thank for you your time. Thank you very much, thank you. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live day one of Dell Technology World from Las Vegas. Thanks for watching.